All right, hey guys, what's going on? Uh, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use this industrial automotive air temperature sensor and interface it with a standard Arduino micro microcontroller. So I just wanna let you know that these types of automotive sensors, uh, this is an air, air uh, temperature sensor. Uh, what's inside of this is actually just a basic thermistor, an NTC type thermistor negative temperature coefficient. It's the same thing that's inside of these uh, automotive coolant sensors. It's just a different type of casing. And it, it really is the same as uh, the video that I made previously with this coolant sensor. Uh, if you don't have the data sheets for these, what you need to do in order to figure out the curves that match those uh, thermistors is you have to get data sets at different temperatures. So fortunately, when I purchased this air temperature sensor, someone had actually <clears throat> used this sensor in a uh, temperature chamber and measured the resistance values at uh, a few different points along along the, uh, the temperature resistance curve. And then I used those values um, in the Steinhardt equation. Uh, I found the constants for the Steinhardt equation using those values. Um, so I know that the, the Steinhardt curve is accurate to the the thermistor curve. So I'm not going to run into too much detail, uh, reference the, the equations and everything. If you want to look into that more in more detail, I have it all linked back in the, uh, the automotive coolant uh, sensor video. But I just wanted to show you that this works the same. Uh, it's the same concept. It's the same principle. It's just a different type of casing. And you can achieve essentially the same results uh, with this type of sensor. I think the benefit of having uh, this type of sensor though, versus uh, if you wanted to use like the coolant sensor is this is this is an open element. So it it likely, the, the thermistor likely responds quicker to temperature changes. So uh, in my case, I wanna use this in the intake manifold. So uh, the temperatures are not gonna be crazy high in there. And I can use this type of sensor in there and have it, you know, have an open element and it'll respond quickly to, to temperature change values in there. Okay, so quick example while I have the, the code up and running with the serial monitor and the air temperature sensor, I'm just gonna use my butane lighter here and hopefully not go too crazy. I went a little too crazy last time and melted a little bit of the casing on the outside, but I'll show you that this is pretty quick to react to temperatures. So this will go up slightly. I don't wanna melt it, but as you can see, the the temperatures on the serial monitor go up when when the thermistor gets heat. And like I said before, the thermistor curve it it has to be accurate, and you need to know the the thermistor curve or or data sheet to make sure that this this is accurate to to read those values. So that's the important part. Uh, but I mean, it's super easy after that's done. You can output some readable value and like display it to a screen or something. So this is all part of a larger project that I'm working on to interface a whole bunch of automotive or industrial grade analog sensors and interface them with a, micro a microcontroller unit and then display them onto some OLED screens. So I'll just flip over to the code here and show you that real quick. Okay, so this is the example code for the air intake temperature sensor to, to output some values onto the serial monitor like before. So there you, can, there you can see that, it's still cooling down from before. This is actually the exact same code that I used with the coolant uh, temperature sensor video that I did. So I'm not gonna go through this in detail. I went through it a little bit more in the previous video, but the important thing is you need to find your Steinhardt constants using uh, particular equations from uh, this Wikipedia page, which I'll link down below as well. And then as soon as you find those values, you can use the Steinhardt equation and then uh, find your resistances and then you can convert those resi resistances to a temperature with the Steinhardt equation and then output your, your actual readable value. And then if you wanted to, to dis display it to a screen, then you would just have to print that onto, onto a screen. It would be pretty straightforward. So just running through the wiring on these real quick, it's actually very similar to the coolant types, uh, the coolant automotive coolant sensor video. So if you want to reference that, you can reference that as well. But they're 
there are two wire sensors. One of them is positive and one of them is ground. So this blue wire I have running straight to the ground port on the Arduino. And then this red wire after I have output, so five volts from the Arduino, I go through a set of resistors, which are similar in resistance to this sensor at room temperature. And then I have, after those resistors, one of this one of these wires is going to the analog input port on the Arduino, and then the other is the wire to the sensor. So because there's no third wire on this, I need to read some voltage out of this sensor. It's called a voltage divider circuit. So I take that voltage value and then I can read it on the Arduino here. So I hope that I hope that this video helped. Um, if you're looking to interface this type of sensor to an Arduino controller unit, um, please stay tuned for some more videos in the future. This is all part of a larger project that I'm working on, like I said, and I'm planning to, now that I've gone through most of those sensors individually and, and kind of figured them, figured them out one by one, I can start to compile all those uh, individual units together into one code. And then I'll show you the prototype board that I have going on, which is going to interface all those sensors into one little unit. And then, and then from there, then I can start to install some of these sensors onto my truck and then play around and, and do a little bit more prototyping and, and see that, uh, you know, whether or not things are working out com completely. So it's, it's kind of a slow process, but you have to take it one step at a time, focus on one thing. And then, you know, as you achieve, uh, reading some values off of a sensor or hooking up a screen like you just you have to work on it one by one and then uh, we'll we'll start to compile things as we go so thanks for watching and stay stay tuned for some more videos cheers